Hello, my name is Marcus Warner, and today we are going to be writing a piece of epic battle music. Let me just talk you through the current setup that I have. I'm currently at my dad's house. I've just put down the application for my own apartment, which I'm going to be moving to next month. But in the meantime, I've got this somewhat janky setup of Mac perched on a very small desk. The keyboard is here on a stand in the middle of the room. I've got my old camera behind me which is filming the keyboard so you can see what I'm doing there. Then over here I've also got the iMac recording as a sort of backup just in case anything goes wrong with the main camera which seems to happen quite often. Yes you can see it's quite a bit of a tip in here. There's a load of stuff that you can't see off camera that I've sort of hidden in corners of the room but hopefully this should be okay and so I'm going to jump into it. Firstly though I need to make an announcement about some some new music that's coming up. A piece that I'm doing in collaboration with a fantastic music composer called Stephen Coltart. He's done the music for the Planet of the Apes game, The Last Frontier. His music was used in trailers and TV spots, it was played in the World Cup, and he's also done various indie games like Interlight and soundtracks for TV shows, most recent of which was this one called Ascendance, which was a big one in New Zealand. So I'm tremendously excited to be working with him on this new project, and him and I are going to be releasing a 12-track album and there's going to be a proper teaser for it which I'm going to be putting on this channel on Friday. Okay I think that's all disclaimers out of the way, let's write some music. I've been commissioned to do a epic 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 piece of battle music. They've given me three references, temp music that they're using. Obviously I'm going to try and match the mood as best I can but create something that's original and unique at the same time. This piece is one that would be heard in the final battle or struggle in a movie where all is at stake. Wonderful. So I'm going to play the references and get a gauge for the mood that they're after, but I do not intend to play any of these more than once. I just want to play them the one time, get a feel for it, because the danger with playing it multiple times, in my opinion, is that in doing so, you start to ingrain the actual temp music in your mind, and you start writing something that you think is original, and then you'll come to the end of the project, play it back, and you've just written the temp music again. First piece is... Second piece. This one they've specified, it's for the end culmination, so the, the climax of the piece, needs to be more warlike, aggressive and grand in scale compared to this one, presumably. If you fall, I will carry her. Hey, I know Ephesio Cross. He comments on a lot of my videos. Hi, Ephesio. <laughs> How are you doing? Actually, that's the point. He's right there. Let me um subscribe. Because I haven't subscribed, I don't think. I didn't realise that I was going to get you as temp music. That's quite funny. Okay. Let's play the final piece of temp music. I'm also going to link all of these in the description, so if you'd like to listen to them in full, please do. Please go and support the artists that are providing the inspiration for my own works. So we've listened to our references. I don't really want to listen to them again unless I really need to. So we're going to move on now, open up Logic, and create some music. So I'm going to go with this kind of tempo to begin with. It's not too laid back and slow, but you can have a slow melody over the top. I'm going to start with an intro, and I'm thinking piano slow drones in the background to begin with. So I'm going to turn on the keyboard here actually get this camera behind me fired up so it's doing something and just have a play around and see what I can come up with. The piano that I'm using in this instance is 8DO's Legacy um, 26, I think, grand? Thank you. 
I'm actually amazed I managed to do that in one take without slipping up. I quite like that length. That to me felt right in terms of building up, building up, building up, cut off for something else to come in. I've just quantized everything and it's all ended up perfectly quantized. But if I go over beneath it where it says strength, I'll turn that down to about 50 or 60, which basically makes me a better player, but it doesn't make it absolutely robotically perfect. I never really was a huge fan of this piano from the very beginning, but recently I found that by having it in the background to provide more of the upper parts, the treble, and then adding a felt piano along with it, you get this fantastic combination of harmonics. If I just duplicate this, but make it an alias, like so. I do that by holding down the shift key whilst copying. Whatever this upper track is doing, this one will copy it. If we listen to them both together, we have a little bit more depth to the piano. You can hear that noise there that it's making. I really like that combination of sounds. That felt piano, by the way, is free to download. It's uh, actually a felt piano made by Christian Henson, who's the guy that founded Spitfire. If you go to his YouTube channel, Christian Henson Music, you can download that for free, but I recommend subscribing and watching some of his videos as well because they're absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we're now an hour into this composition and I would say that the intro as a rough sketch is pretty much done. I have started off doing this by kind of going through and each thing I did I started talking about and I realised after about 15-20 minutes that this would make the video very long and very boring. So I reverted to doing a sort of time lapse and now I'm just going to quickly explain what I've done. But first, let's play it and have a listen. To start off with, we had the piano track, and then we added to it by putting some drone tones in the background. This starts off with Hans Zimmer strings, cellos, Colignano tratto, and then this second one, I haven't renamed the track, but it's something ridiculous. What is it? It's trem Tremolo Consordino Ponticello Waves. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff going on for one playing technique. Later on in the piece, we build up our octaves. We start off with the drone tones being very low down and just a fifth of A and E. We're in C major. In the background, we have 8 Dio's epic Tycho's. I felt without the percussion, the piece was a little bit slow, and the next section was just going to come out of nowhere and take the audience a bit by surprise. Staccato violins and staccato violas to begin with, along with legato cellos and legato basses. The chords are all straightforward and we've just got this simple melody going on in the strings. And what happens in the second half of this section is the violins 1 move up an octave but playing the same kind of thing and violins 2 join in and play the octave that violins 1 have just left behind. So we end up with this building, expanding sound. Got another felt piano here, just playing some octaves. And then uh, Santor, again Logic's inbuilt one, to give us a little bit more of a tempo. And on the very last chord we have the brass enter in preparation for this next section and all they're doing is playing A. I think today it's been interesting to work on a piece whilst under the scrutiny of a camera. I find that my work has sped up a lot when I've got a camera on me because it's like, well, I don't really want to be fanning around on Facebook. What I've just done now is kind of create a main motif for the piece. Going from the top, we've got the horns playing the main melody, surprise, trombones playing chords, tubers playing the bass notes, and then we have percussion hits. We've got the hits at the top there, we've got epic toms high, 
Epic Tom's Low and then Epic Tygos, which makes for a pretty intense combination. The piano is underneath doubling the melody of the horns and providing some harmony. The sine bass providing the sub frequencies again, you can see here it's become a little bit more intense because it's now playing crotchets or quarter notes if you're American. It's in the background, but it's a slight drive. It's like, okay, now we're building up. Things are going to be getting interesting shortly. We've got the sopranos, altos, and tenors singing at the moment. Basically doing the chords again, but they're doing a sort of mid to high pitch, which kind of fills in above the brass and below the high strings and the piano. Violins, again, doubling the horns, an octave and then two octaves above, respectively. The violas are underneath at the moment, playing a quick ostinato, which is quite refined. It's only about three or four notes. But as the piece progresses, this will build, the register will increase, and it will get more epic. You can just about hear the ostinato, but you can also hear the sort of the sound of the strings moving, which also adds to the rhythm at this point. Underneath them, we have the cello section, which are playing another sort of, it's not even really an ostinato, it's more like the two upper notes of the chord, and alternating, which gives us something a little bit more interesting than if they were just playing static notes. It's actually got a little bit of movement to it. The basses are, as usual, playing root notes of each chord. All of this together means that we've got instruments that are moving quickly and others that are moving very slowly, which I think it's the main kind of identity of a piece like this. And battle music in general tends to have this combination of quick and slow. So if I play it all together now, you'll start to hear the makings of what the final climax is going to sound like. But at the moment, we've got reduced percussion and a thinner texture than we might have at the end. I'm going to play from the end of the intro into the breakdown section and then the build up to this reveal of the melody. So it's feeling a little bit bare at the moment. I think there could be some more percussion cymbals, as well as some fills and interjections, probably from the woodwinds or synths. Because the chords kind of stretch out and the melody stretches out and there's times when you're sort of waiting for something a little bit more to happen. But I'm gonna focus on that later and instead now move on to this next section, which is going to be more percussive. There's gonna be more hi-hats and movement to it. This has now introduced the melody to us. And what I'm gonna do is copy across the chords underneath and then use those as a basis to build this new rhythm on. Okay, so night has fallen. Welcome to the more ambient part of the show where we relax, light a candle, and basically I got distracted, had to make a Skype call and make dinner. So all that time went past and it looks like it's taken me until nightfall to write about six tracks which is kind of embarrassing. So I thought I'd just add that disclaimer. I did other stuff. What I've done here is I've created the basis of a percussion line which is probably going to carry through to the end of the piece. We can see here that when it enters, I think we're about the two minute mark, or just before the two minute mark, and the piece is probably going to be about three minutes thirty in length. So this is kind of about the right time to sort of bring in the final section that builds and builds towards the end. I'm going to play through what I've created so far and then talk about what I'm next going to be doing to build on it towards the end. I'm going to take this and probably add a few more hi-hat layers. I feel like we need some more top end energy. And I also want to get some flutes playing staccatos. Maybe add a few layers in, see if I fancy going all the way to the end this evening. But if not, I'll probably be doing it next week. Let's do this.
Okay, so we've just hit 9 p.m. and I'm gonna probably call it a day here with this piece now and actually go on and start editing this video in preparation for tomorrow. So I thought I'd just talk quickly through what I've done since I last spoke. Why well, I'm actually pretty pleased about how far I've got today. So as you can tell from watching the time lapse, I haven't actually added any further sections on, so we haven't got into the development towards the end. But what I've done is really, really build upon the sections that we already have. And I thought upon finishing them earlier that eh, they're pretty much done. There's not too much that needs to be added. But upon playing around with some ideas, in the strings especially, and also taking a break and listening to some Two Steps From Hell, I then decided, I was like, okay, no, I haven't quite done enough. I started by adding an ostinato in the violin section one, added to that another ostinato, which is about a third and a fourth below in violins two, so it was quite a thick texture. <laughs> I recorded in one bar by hand and then did the rest with the piano roll, because I'm certainly not that fast at playing. Added in the Santor again, this time playing kind of a few notes from the chords, but mostly just creating a sort of drone that's got rhythm to it as well. Earlier on there was the big toms playing the main percussive rhythm, there was a counter tom that was filling in the gaps, and then there was some hi-hat movement. Since then I've added tambourine and a hi-hat that kind of almost doubles what the strings are doing. It's playing along with the strings and it really adds to the fast tempo part of the piece. We then have an orchestral square, square? We have an orchestral snare, that's doubling the toms to create a slightly different sound as we get to the second half of this phrase here. Oh yes, and then finally added some flute arpeggios. You can see here that in preparation for the next part of the track, I've done half the phrase but then muted it because I felt that the first half didn't really require the flutes to be there, but in the second half they come in to add more variety and the sense of progression. Going back on ourselves a little bit towards the section before, the the, the 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 grand reveal of the main theme as it were, I've brought the horns forward in the mix a little bit and added in trumpets that were lacking and actually I've not been using trumpets a lot lately because I find that they're a little bit too brash for my liking but this is the kind of piece that I feel would really benefit from them. So at the second half of the phrase and the main melody they come in and double the horns an octave up. I got rid of the legato violins, I just did not work at all. I don't know what I was thinking earlier. It was just completely not necessary. The horns have the main melody. The trumpets then add to that later on in the section, which gives it uh, more, more of a progressive feeling. And then the strings, I then substituted the legato stuff with another staccato melody, which is then doubled in violins to an octave lower, which sounds like this. Earlier on I said, and I don't know why, but I was like, I haven't written the part for the basses in the choir because I didn't want to, because I'm cool. Looking back, I'm like, hang on a second, I didn't do that deliberately, I just forgot. So all I did was add in the basses, change the soprano and alto lines at the very end to have this chromatic rise. It sounds really weird on its own, but um, with the rest of the music, it sounds pretty cool. With this other section as well, added some cymbals in for a bit of extra beef, and I think that is pretty much everything that I've done since I last spoke to you. So with that being said, I'm going to play it from the very beginning, have a listen, and uh, we'll share this experience together, or I'll put a time stamp to skip to for the outro, or whatever it is I'm going to say next. I don't know, I don't plan these ahead.
Okay, so that's the result of today's work. I think personally it's not sounding too bad, but I can't say for certain until I've actually come back tomorrow and checked it. I think one thing that stands out to me at the moment is that the symbols are a little bit too loud, but other than that I quite like what's going on. I just think the sections in the middle where it breaks away need to be blended together a little bit better. I think it's actually been quite a fun experience having the cameras pointing at me and this sort of cosy little setup going on because it's given me an incentive to work faster because I've got the cameras pointing at me and I don't really want to be wasting battery and memory card space. So I've been trying to work as efficiently as possible and in doing so I would say that this has actually come about a lot faster than it normally would do. So it's been fun. I will say that it's been kind of stressful as well. I'm not sure if I'll do it again, but for the rest of the series on this piece of music, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if this is the end of the video because I think I'm coming back, but if I'm not coming back, then please subscribe. Good morning. So it's the next day, and as you can probably tell from my outward appearance, I'm not going to be doing any more music production and filming. Instead, I've got to be editing because... Well, this tutorial thing is new to me, and I discovered upon exporting in ScreenFlow last night that with the five or so hours of footage from the desktop and from the iMac camera that it was going to take about four hours to export. So I left that overnight, came back this morning, and I've discovered that even though it should have been recording all the audio from the computer, it neglected to record anything from Logic, possibly because I had it sent out to a headphone amplifier. So the music that you've heard me playing on Logic, I will now have to edit that in for the purpose of the video, and so it makes sense. So I'm actually talking about stuff that you can hear, which is a bummer. Okay, so that was a lot of moaning, but long story short, this is where I'm going to be wrapping up the video. Hopefully next time I record, I've got a firmer grasp on the technique now and I'll be able to do it more efficiently. So if you're interested in seeing more of this particular logic session, uh, let me know by leaving a comment below. And if so, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and please be sure to uh, smash the like button and... I always forget all of this. So hit the subscribe button which is down on the right and if you want to be notified every time I upload there's a little button with a bell icon. Please press it. Bye bye.